This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. I used to watch her on Twitch. How far she's fallen. There's nothing wrong with working at a coffee shop. If you like it, okay? Yeah. My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Tina Kitten to uncover the truth about how rapidly becoming a popular streamer has forced her to face blatant lies published about her why she regrets choosing the username Tina Kid, and how she's utilizing her experience with dangerous parasocial relationships to protect the next generation. Hello, Ooh. Tina! <laughs> Were you gonna give me a hug? We'll go for a hug! I, th I thought you went for a hug! <laughs> when I googled your name, uh -huh. so many news articles came up that were just full of rumors. Rumors? That you're dating corpse. Oh! <laughs> We know it exists, but we're just like... <gasps> was any part of you prepared for the kind of attention that you now receive? No. Do you think anyone's like prepared though? Maybe unless they were like born into that. Maybe. Yeah, like if you're part of royalty or something yeah. and from birth they're like, you are gonna have lots of people trying to devour you with words and take <laughs> advantage of you at any moment and exploit everything about you. I don't think anybody, anybody's like really capable of having that many opinions on them. I just don't yeah. think people are meant for that. You are seen as one of the most positive and wholesome oh. figures on the internet. Oh. Do you think that it's difficult to uphold that idea that people have of you? I would always want to be seen as like somebody positive. Wholesome is more so the difficult one because yeah. obviously sometimes I get angry. I play games, you know, like yeah. I'm competitive. I've heard you say the f word once. Yeah, the f Twice. word. <laughs> <laughs> that when I first started streaming, I did not swear that much. And now I swear so much. <laughs> Why? Because you're surrounded by other people that do? Corpse and Emma, they're bad influence. <laughs> Sometimes they were like, can I use the, the B word coupon? And I would call them a bitch. Why, Corpse? You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Also, sometimes I feel like when you are wholesome, I don't want anybody to mix up wholesomeness with being naive. I wouldn't want anyone to think like, oh, just because she's nice to me, it means she knows nothing about the world. From what I've seen from your community, everyone is so supportive yeah, and nice. encouraging yeah. and very positive. And I feel like that is in many ways a symbol of who you are. Oh, uh, what the heck? Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Anthony. I'm just stating facts. As long as you're checking them constantly, like I mm -hmm. would say it's a pretty good reflection of mm -hmm. you as a creator. Considering you blew up so quickly, mm -hmm. you gained 9,000 followers in the first two years of streaming, and then yeah. one oh God, million in the next year. What were some of the unforeseen struggles that you faced? So I actually enjoyed having a larger audience, I just yeah. struggled with feeling undeserving of the audience. Imposter syndrome. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I will say that I almost kind of enjoyed having more people watch because I think when I was like a younger streamer, the level of parasocial relationships that I developed with a smaller audience was mm. actually scarier to me. I started streaming when I was like, what, like 15, 14? I don't know why, I just had like, well, maybe I do know why, but I had an audience of older dudes. And so I struggled drawing boundaries when I was younger. If mm -hmm. somebody like subscribes to you, sometimes they oh. think they are entitled to mm. your time because yeah. they gave you $4.99 a month. <laughs> like, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah. oh. Did you feel tempted to give people things because they kind of well, felt like, entitled? I, don't, I, I would like, sometimes be people's like therapist, type out all their emotions to you all the time. I'm like 16. I'm like, yeah. I want homework. I just, <laughs> That's what it used to cost. Months, you can get therapy from a 16 year old. <laughs> Even Tina gets hate comments? Yes, I do. It's just strange to see that right. with you. I mean, sometimes people think it's like fake. Oh, who you are? So people are like, she's being so nice and for what? No, she's really not like this. When I when I met her out front, she uh, screamed at me, threw me on the ground, stepped on my face, and oh. then punched a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. And then robbed him. And then you jumped on a Razor scooter and flipped it so it hit my ankle. <laughs> not the Razor scooter. It's a lot easier to deal with it when you know where it comes from. If it's something about me being like feminine or soft-spoken or whatever, I'm like, mm, internalized misogyny. When you can like kind of source where their hurt would come from, it yeah. makes it easier for me to deal with it. Do you deal with people who imply that you're too loud? 
kind of like you need to make yourself smaller. Or I did at first when I was growing feel the need to almost like make myself smaller and like maybe like say less because I felt the more I had to say, the more bad stuff would be coming mm -hmm. my way. You so you thought I mean? that you were bringing it on? When people are saying so many bad things to you, obviously you're going to be like, hmm, I'm doing something wrong. I think like once I took the time to like try to source where the criticism came from, I was yeah. like, okay. I remember I used to like cry like after my streams, especially like early on in the yeah. beginning. I'd be like, thanks so much for watching guys and stream. <laughs> All of like, your emotions would come out. It, it was like overwhelming, allowing myself to experience like a ton of emotion through like just crying. It's like healthy instead of like getting mad at people or holding it in and then exploding at somebody. The more you get into like the habit of venting on the internet, that kind of feedback can be addicting. When the internet does give you that kind of uh, a response that you wish you could get from a friend, but on a huge yeah. level. It's addicting. It's very addicting. But it's not so you also don't want to like get into the habit of like self-deprecation too, because that can also be addicting. Like when you use it to like cope all the yeah. time, sometimes you say bad things to yourself. I used to really fall into habits of being self-deprecating on the internet because I felt like, I mean, it was easy and it's easy. Relatable. Way, it's relatable. It's <laughs> relatable and, and it was an easy way for me to point out flaws that I saw in myself yeah. before other people had the chance to point them out. That is also what I do all the time. I'm yeah. trying to stop doing yeah. that. Cause it's like, if I say that I have a big forehead, no one else can say it first and hurt me. For a while I did the opposite where I was like, I turned the joke into something really positive where I was overly confident and surprisingly people treated me like I was deserving of more respect because I treated myself that way. Wow. So you know those infographics where they show someone like shy and like yeah. intimidated and then someone looks like super confident? Even in my brain, like when I see that, I'm like, yeah, that person deserves a raise. <laughs> Right? Like, they get stuff done. There is so much truth behind just body language to know how confident someone is. Notice how my shoulders <laughs> are You're like, I'm confident. I deserve a raise. <laughs> you were born in South Korea. Yes, I was. And how long did you live there? 14 years, 15? 14 years there? Accumulative, yeah. I was born, I moved when I was six and then came back when I was like maybe 10. And then you moved back to the US what were some of the big culture shocks? Racism. Big reason as to why I don't know Korean anymore is because I completely took it out of me. There were so many people that were like, why are your eyes shaped like that? And I was the only like non-white person in my school. I was like, oh, I just don't think I want to be Korean right now. I was so young, like I didn't know. Mm. And I'm so sad that that happened because when I moved back to Korea, I was like, oh God, like everybody embraces being Korean here. When I was younger, I was angry and alone. I lived in like a retirement neighborhood. All my neighbors were like old people. Mm -hmm. And during recess, I had like, you know, I would bury myself in wood chips. Like, <laughs> it was a cold winter and like I needed a nap. So did you isolate yourself? I think I struggled with social cues like a lot back then. Mm -hmm. I was just a kid, like kids are kind of, yeah. kids are a little weird. I remember when I would eat mealtime, I would sit at my dinner table for like two hours and my parents would be like, this is just getting ridiculous. Like this is obviously gonna hold our child back. They started timing my meals. How much time would you have maybe to like eat your an, meal? Maybe like an hour, which you would think. That's, that's plenty that's, of time. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> but like there would still be so much food left on the plate. <laughs> and like, even to this day, like my friends say, Tina time. <laughs> Tina time, what is Tina time? It means like so slow. Like I'm the last person to leave meal time. Yeah. Last person to leave a room because I'm still getting my stuff together. I have a poor measurement of time in my head. I don't know how long we've been sitting here. Six hours. Well, no, maybe no. not. <laughs> like that, 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 you, know, you, you have a little, little measure of time. A li yeah, a little measurement, but like I genuinely can't say if it's been like, has it been one hour? actually almost exactly. It's been exactly <gasps> one hour. Yeah. Right, that's amazing. Okay, maybe I do. Tina understood the concept of time. It wasn't a bad child. It, like mm. I did like hang out by myself. Like I would throw my flip flop into a ditch and like chase after it and wade through the water. What kind of ditch? Was it sewage? Oh my God, no, I would hope not. Okay, like, then it sounds fun, yeah. It was like, it was a good time. Oh, that explains like all the, all the disease. <laughs> But then when I came inside, I played games a lot. I would always get hand-me-downs from my dad. I would always just daydream about like medieval stuff though, you know, like yeah. dragons and magic. Probably be because of the games that I would play. I never thought I would, you know, stream it one day. Isn't that interesting that the thing in your life that 
was bringing you joy. That kind of was the disconnect from the rest of your life. Disconnect yeah. from reality mm -hmm. became the thing that now is your reality. Crazy when your parents are like, oh, like, you'll never get a job playing games. Mm -hmm. And then you do. When did you first start blowing up on the internet? I think September, 2020. That's so recent. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Why did you start blowing up? Oh yeah, no, among <laughs> us. Were you watching the numbers? Were you obsessed with the growth? It felt bad because I was like taking from people. Like you were leeching off of them? Yes, that's the worst feeling. I was like, oh God, like this sucks. So you, you gotta... felt like you didn't deserve the audience that you yeah. built because you were just taking? No, that felt so bad. And I was like, I didn't know how to like address that feeling. And sometimes mm -hmm. like I, I still don't, intentional or not, it just happened to be that way. When you started getting popular playing Among Us and you started seeing your numbers skyrocket, what were the thoughts that were going through your head? Oh my God, I'll be okay. Financially, I felt like I was in shambles. It did a like, help with a lot of things that I was struggling with. Did the thought ever come to mind, oh, this might be my thing. This, I might have a career here. When I hit 100K on Twitch, oh, like I'm growing kind of fast. Like this is kind of exciting because I thought that if I continued to stream for the rest of my life, I still wouldn't hit 100K for years, 9K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So in my head, I was like, if I do the math, maybe I'll do like, 80 one day, like 80K. So 80 by the time you're 80. Exactly. I just had hit 100K and it was so soon. I remember being so excited and I was like, obviously like, is it gonna get too much bigger, you know? And then yeah. it did and I was like, yeah. Did you have to like sit your parents down and say, mom, dad, not going to school anymore. I'm gonna play games. I did not have to do that. So they had known that this was like something I did. They didn't know that any financial support I had was real. They thought mm -hmm. it was like monopoly money basically mm -hmm. until I actually brought home like a drawing tablet and I was like, look mom. And she was like, oh, that's real money. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, it is. Shayoshi wants to know. Oh. Do you know Shayoshi? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shayoshi wants to know if you knew that you'd blow up, would you have chosen the name Tina Kitten? Mm -mm. <laughs> no? No. Why? Have you ever heard of the term Discord kitten? No. Should I have? I don't know. It Do just, I hang out with the wrong people? I don't know. Maybe the right people. Oh. It's just like, you know when you just call someone like a kitten? Does that make sense? Like the, the implications feel very like weird to me. Mm, like you know? get on your knees and purr? Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm. And I'm like, oh, maybe I would, I don't want that. But I was like, I was a child. I was like, I like cats, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't really ever think it would be an alias that would be put on things. That's so. the name of this video. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it, it, it's in all caps. It is in all caps. <laughs> and you know, maybe it would have been something like, I don't really know. I never really thought about it. Actually, sometimes people call me crunch. Crunch? Do you hate that? Why are you crunch? I love crunch. Crunch? Why yeah. are you crunch? There's very little to assume about that name. On my birthday, all oh, this made me so teary eyed. But what? they, they, it was like happy birthday crunch was like the hashtag that they like trended or something. Aww. It was so cute. Are you fearing something that when, when these numbers are below a certain point that uh. this kind of fear comes up? Oh God. Like what would you say is your worst fear about what would happen to your career if the numbers drop too far? And by the way, I've also had Corpse and a ton of Tina's other friends on here, not to mention the upcoming episodes with Niachu and Valkyrie and a ton of others, which you could find here or on the completely uncensored podcast version of the show, which you could find down in the description below. And it goes without saying, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for their continued sponsorship. Therapy has been really beneficial in allowing me to have empathy for my younger self and therefore understand who I am today more. It can be customized to whatever is right for you. It provides tools to help with common struggles like motivation or feelings of depression, anxiety, stress, or insecurity. And BetterHelp screens all their therapists to ensure that they're certified and that they're licensed and provides customized therapy that offers video, phone, and live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone or even speak over the phone if that's not something that you're comfortable with. Therapy can be expensive and the price of finding a therapist that you like and connect with can be overwhelming, which is why BetterHelp offers a more affordable alternative to in-person therapy where you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. So that is why I'm thankful to BetterHelp who are giving I Spent Today with viewers and listeners 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Padilla. That's betterhelp.com slash Padilla. 
Now, back to the world of Tina Kim. What would you say is your worst fear about what would happen to your career if the numbers dropped too far? I was thinking in my head that I would work at a coffee shop. You know, maybe I'll just get a little business degree, work at a coffee shop, but I was like, I don't know how sustainable that'll be, but maybe as long as I'm happy, right? I would feel really like sad if people came to the coffee shop that I was working at and bullied me. I used to watch her on Twitch, how far she's fallen. There's nothing wrong with working at a coffee shop if you like it, okay? <laughs> if anybody looks down on me being a barista uh, after being a Twitch streamer, yeah. I'll get upset. So your worst fear is that you're gonna do a job that you like? Well, that people would bully me, but like, I don't think I'm even at that stage where right. people would even come in by the masses. Also the type of audience that you foster. They're, they're nice. They would love you. They would come in and be like, holy shit, Tina works here. I wish, that'd be so cute. You feel a little bit of fear about what might happen if these numbers are too low. This, this is stressful. It's I because might... I'm not done yet. I'm having so much fun. Dating. Oh. You keep your private life very mm. private. How do you choose what to bring people in on? Like I would always just assume it's nobody's business, you know? Mm. I could only imagine, like people already take friendships to such an extreme. I've been in a few public relationships mm. online. It even got to a point where it was like daily vlog, everything that we do on camera, right. we're putting it out every single day. Unsolicited opinions would seep into my know. head. It it's really so altered the way bad. that I that I perceive everything in the relationship. I just don't think like your relationships with people are meant to be analyzed like that anyways. Mm. And so it's just kind of like some things aren't meant to be private, I think. It's tempting to let people in though because people like that connection. There's this, this almost like, I feel like the need to be yeah. fully transparent, open, yeah. but you know, there's gotta be like a divide, right? A lot of people have work-life balance and I feel like just because I'm a content creator doesn't mean I should deny myself that same balance. This is still at the end of the day, it's work. It is, it is work. What's next for Tina Kitten? Once, you know, I would say like the world opens back up. I want to do like IRL streams. A couple years prior, I did like backpacking and I love traveling like a lot. I like experiencing the world with people. I think it's so fun. I would be terrified of IRL streaming because people know where you are That's in the stream true. at all times. Are you going to hire a bodyguard? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Multiple. Yes. Don't mess with me. Don't get you. <laughs> You were recently announced as a creator with 100 Thieves, the mm -hmm. esports organization. Yeah. What was that like for you? Was that was that a huge moment? It felt like the next step. I had always felt like, for one, I would never like, I guess, be a part of an org. Like I felt like I didn't like fit the image, but it was cool because I felt like, I don't know, they like recognized me as like a creator. Isn't it interesting that you didn't ask for anyone to recognize you that way? In fact, you kind of pushed away the idea of someone thinking too highly of you, yeah. but yet you have 100 oh Thieves coming to you, you have, you were just brought on to the Dream SMP, yeah, you're part nice. of these big groups. Yeah, and I think that kind grateful. of in and of itself shows that you are deserving. What the heck, that's so nice. That's so nice. I don't know, like, I'll, 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 is it chalked up? Yeah, choked kind up. Of. Choked yeah. up? It's not chalk? <laughs> I think it's choked up. What's the chalked one then? You chalk it up to something? That is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all chalked <laughs> up. <laughs> I personally like am making an effort to be more accepting of things like that just because I think when I am being like a go-getter and things like that, it, ins it would inspire like my audience to do the same. Like, cause I think it is such a bad habit to like tear down on myself and not go for things and stuff because I'm like, they're watching, you know? Mm -hmm. And if they see that I like reject opportunities because I don't feel like I'm good enough or I explain that I don't feel like I'm good enough, I don't want them to then also put themselves down in that way. Do you feel like in a sense, having this audience that you care about and treating yourself the way that you want them to treat themselves has been beneficial for you? Yes. It makes me like want to be a better me all the time, which I'm very grateful for because I'm like, ooh, I wonder if I was by myself, if this would be the same case. But it's because I know that there are people watching, like I want to be a better me so other people are inspired to be a better them. What is it about doing what you do that brings you the most joy? Seeing like a lot more girls in this space and mm. like being able to teach them how to draw boundaries and being like that kind of person that can like, you know, provide that kind of comfort to people. That it makes me super happy because it's something that I wish I had growing up a little bit. It's really fun to see the space changing. I spent a day with Tina Kid, one of the most magnetically kind-hearted people I've ever met. And 
One thing that really sits with me is how so many of us have the idea that using self-deprecation is a medicine that allows us to acknowledge and even circumvent negativity about us before it ever reaches us. But it may actually be the very thing that invites negativity and poison into our lives in the first place. You haven't drank water. Why drink water when you have blood? I mean, huh? What? <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. Explains a lot. Do not go to idrinkblood.com. Is that a real website? Oh yeah. idrinkblood.com. Yeah, it's fucked up. Do not go there. Do not go to idrinkblood.com. Do not. Is that real? Never go there. Guys, answer me. Why is everyone so quiet? <laughs> <laughs> is that a real website? <laughs>